Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be reviving a series I did about five years ago and this is basically about game engines available per programming language. So I'm going to take a programming language and I'm going to tell you what options are available in that language and we're going to start things off with Python. Now the first one you're going to know with Python is Pygame. Their website is ugly as sin as you can see in front of you but this is sort of the universal make 2D style game engine out there. Uh, it is for 2D games only. Only, uh, but it's uh, had a bit of a schism lately. So the community of developers behind Pygame uh, spun off and they actually created something called Pygame uh, Pi Community Edition. So these are forks of the same project. Both are being updated. Both accomplish more or less the same task, which is they are 2D game engines using the Python language. What you'll find for both of these is there is an absolute ton of um, materials out there for learning Python games. Both projects are very active. Which one you want to go with is really up to you. Uh, I think Pygame probably has the bigger, Pygame CE I mean, has the bigger community going forward if that's what's going to decide it for you. But those are probably the two most popular 2D game engines out there for Python. Uh, but we've also got RenPy. Now RenPy is a special thing. RenPy is actually for creating visual novels. Uh, one of the most popular programs for creating visual novels. By the way, I have done videos about almost everything we were talking about today. So in the list of game engines, I will also have links to like more details if it's available. So if you want to create a visual novel, which again, this types of games you're talking about, you see down the side. Uh, some of the examples that were created using this uh, are shown here. Uh, it is uh, again, a game engine optimized towards creating these visual novel type experiences. RenPy is super popular in that space. I also did a breakdown of uh, visual novel kits out there as well. If you're interested in that specifically, uh, that is available on the channel as well. So RenPy is super popular for creating visual uh, novel type games. And then we have Python Arcade. Now, Python Arcade is all about creating simple style games. So you see here, uh, here's some how you draw sprites on the screen, sprite pathing, and so on. So this is, uh, again, similar to Pi Game. I think it's a little bit... Well, it's definitely newer. Um, I don't know the nuances why you would pick one over the other, but as you can see, very well documented, decent community around it. If you're interested, uh, Python Arcade is another option for creating 2D games. Another one on the 2D game side of things is Piglet. Now, Piglet gets my vote just because I love the name. Uh, it is a powerful, easy-to-use Python library for developing games and other visually rich media on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It supports Windows, windowing, mouse, keyboard controllers, joysticks, displaying images and videos, playing sound and music, and so on. So uh, that is the other option here is Piglet. Uh, there are, again, a decent number of 2D choices. Uh, and then we got another one that... See, I don't know if this one qualifies as being a game engine, but it is highly recommended, and that is Kivi. Now, I've never actually used Kivi, but it's an app development framework. But if you go into uh, the details of it, you'll actually see uh, documentation on creating games. So a Pong game tutorial and so on. So uh, this is more like, I think, like a QT uh, type setup, but instead for Python, but you can also use it to create games. So I have included it here. So Kivi is available on Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, and Android. And then we're moving into 3D. So you notice up to this point in time, we were entirely 2D frameworks uh, and you had like Pi Game and Pi Game CE dominating that space. When we move into 3D, uh, it's a bit more interesting and probably the most interesting of them all is UPBGE. Now this started life as the Blender game engine. And the Blender game engine was actually yanked out of Blender uh, in Blender 2.8. Uh, so you can use like a visual coding logic. Like you can see right here, this um, scripting process like this. But the cool thing with UPBGE is you can also obviously do all of your game logic in Python, if you so wished. And on top of that, you have all of this integrated directly inside of the Blender game engine or of Blender itself. So your editor and your runtime and everything else are all Blender. So if you want to stay in Blender, create your content in Blender, create your levels in Blender, do your game logic in Blender, that is what UPBGE is all about. Now, one of the challenges that they had with the Blender game engine is Blender is under the GPL v3 license, and that doesn't play incredibly well with games. So it'll be interesting to see if UB, UPBGE gets around that. But it is a very interesting project. I've covered a couple of times, and I would recommend checking it out, especially if you have Blender as a key piece in your workflow. Another one we've got is Panda. Now, Panda is actually a commercial game engine. This is a, com um, a combination between, uh, or a collaboration, I should say, uh, between Carnegie Mellon 
and Disney. And it was actually used to create the game Toontown Online. Uh, now, it's technically, uh, behind the scenes, it is a C++ game engine. So it combines the speed of C++ with the ease of use of Python. So your game logic is all being done using the Python programming language, but the code itself is um, C++ based on the back end. So it's a fast game engine. It is an impressive project. I've done some hands-on time with it, and I would recommend checking it out. As you can see, November 8th, 2024, last official update. So it does get continuously updated. Uh, it is a very cool project. And the big thing about Panda 3D is, again, this was used to create MMOs. It is battle-tested for sure. Now, if you want something like Panda 3D, but a little bit... Uh, more Python focused and easier to work with. That's where the Ursina engine kicks in. So this is a Python powered open source game engine. Now you're gonna notice if I come on down here and take a look at the dependencies, Panda 3D. So this is built on top of Panda 3D, Pillow, Piper Clip, and some other tools as well, as well as Python 3.10. Uh, it is completely free to use. You'll notice there are a couple of things here. So you've got a variety of samples available uh, showing you how to set up and create certain kinds of games. And then we've also have a, an asset store available here, but not really anything in it, which is on shame. Hopefully that develops out further. Now, the thing that you might be asking, okay, is Ursina Engine being handled and updated? And the good news is, yes, it is. If. So if you head on over to the GitHub page, you will find it is an MIT licensed game engine, 2.2K uh, stars, so definitely popular enough. And uh, three hours ago was the last update. So Ursina engine is definitely continuing to be updated. You get an idea of what the code looks like over here. Again, this is, a, I think, designed as a more accessible Panda 3D type engine. So if you didn't really like the way Panda works specifically, you wanted a more Python-esque way of working, uh, that does seem to be the focus of the Ursina engine. All right, so another 3D option there. And then we get to the final 3D option, and this is the Cave Engine. Now, the Cave Engine, I actually did a video about this, I think, about six months ago. It is a very interesting niche because this is the only game engine for Python that is fully integrated. So it has a level editor like you would see in Godot, Unity, Unreal, etc. So you got this full editing environment, and then you do your scripting logic with Python scripting. Now, you'll notice on the back end, it is still C++. Uh, so that is the, the cool thing about um, the engine. The one downside is... I do believe it is Windows only. Yeah, so that is the catch. I think there is a build for other platforms out there, but in terms of released binaries, Windows only is kind of an issue right now. So if you're not using Windows, you're out of luck. But if you wanna have a Python experience where you have a 3D level editor, Cave Engine is unique in that particular space. Now, there are some level editors available for Panda 3D, and I assume as a result, they would also work for the Ursina engine, uh, but I don't know how up-to-date they are. They're always secondary projects for the most part. All right, now we're getting into another area, and this is bindings. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do bindings for all of programming languages, uh, but because there's a couple of them that you've just got so many out there, uh, but I am going to do it for Python because Python is a pretty popular language for doing first-class bindings for. Now, bindings are basically remapping. A lot of times, it's a C, uh, framework that has been uh, had Python bindings for it. So it makes it feel like you are using uh, Python directly, but you're ultimately calling through to a native library like C++, C, uh, or various other uh, languages out there. So we've got Ogre. Uh, so Ogre 3D is available as a set of bindings for Python. So if you want to use Ogre 3D framework, but you'd rather use uh, the Python programming language, that is an option. Now, one thing to note, uh, Ogre 1.0 provides Python bindings directly, uh, so that is cool. So if you're using a newer version, the Python bindings are included. Those are older ones uh, that were available. So if you want to use that framework, you can. Same thing with SFML. Now, the SFML is the Simple Fast Media Library. It's a C++ library for doing common uh, things, input, window management, drawing on screen, 2D sprites, that kind of thing. Um, and you've got bindings available for SFML for Python. And then on top of that, you also have bindings for SDL. SDL uh, being simple direct media layer, another popular 2D framework plus low level things like timers and input handling and so on. Uh, so Python bindings are available for that. And then we've also got Python bindings for the Allegro language. Again, another one of those 2D frameworks that kind of um, does all that low level stuff for you. And then finally, we have Raylib bindings as well. Uh, Raylib has bindings for every single programming language under the sun. So as I continue this series, you're probably going to hear about Raylib a few more times. All right, we also have 
Pi OpenGL. Technically, well, they do call them OpenGL bindings, so we'll go with that. I don't know why this image keeps shrinking and coming back, uh, but this binds a number of technologies. So we've got OpenGL 1.1 to 4.4, as well as GLES, uh, multiple different versions, GLU, EGL, WGL, and GLX, GLUT, free GLUT, and so on. So this is a binding for the whole Pi on, uh, sorry, the uh, OpenGL ecosystem, including things again like Glut, which is like a windowing creation toolkit that goes along with OpenGL. So if you want to create your own 3D application more or less from scratch, Pi OpenGL is probably where you want to go with that. And that's it. So those are the major frameworks I can think of for the Python programming language. Of course, if I missed any, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what other languages you're interested in seeing me cover. C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, slash TypeScript are probably all for sure. Uh, maybe Rust, a few others, um, Hacks possibly. If there's a language you want to hear coverage of specifically, do let me know and I will do my best. But we'll get the major ones out of the way soon. So that's it. Uh, major Python game engines. And if I've missed any Python game engines, let me know in the comments down below so the readers know there are other options out there as well. All right, that's it. Hopefully you found that useful. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.